Monody on the Death of Chatterton. First Version by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Read by Frank Blissett. Now prompts the muse poetic lays, and high my bosom beats with love of praise. But Chatterton, methinks I hear thy name, for cold my fancy grows, and dead each hope of fame. When want and cold neglect had chilled thy soul, a thirst for death I see thee drench the bowl. Thy corpse of many a livid hue on the bare ground I view, whilst various passions all my mind engage. Now is my breast distended with a sigh, and now a flash of rage darts through the tear that glistens in my eye. Is this the land of liberal hearts? Is this the land where genius ne'er in vain poured forth her soul-enchanting strain? Ah, me, yet butler against the bigot foe, well skilled to aim keen humor's dart, yet butler felt want's poignant sting. And Otway, master of the tragic art, whom pity's self had taught to sing, sank beneath a load of woe. This ever can the generous Briton hear, and starts not in his eyes the indignant tear? Elate of heart and confident of fame, from vales where Avon sports, the minstrel came. Gay as the poet hastes along, he meditates the future song. How Ella battled with his country's foes, and whilst fancy in the air paints him many a vision fair, his eyes dance rapture and his bosom glows. With generous joy he views the ideal gold. He listens to many a widow's prayers, and many an orphan's thanks he hears. He soothes to peace the careworn breast. He bids the debtor's eyes no rest, and liberty and bliss behold. And now he punishes the heart of steel, and her own iron rod he makes oppression feel. Fated to heave sad disappointment's sigh, to feel the hope now raised and now depressed, to feel the burnings of an injured breast, from all thy fate's deep sorrow keen in vain, O youth, I turn the affrighted eye. For powerful fancy ever nigh, the hateful pitcher forces on my sight. Their death of every dear delight frowns poverty of giant mien. In vain I seek the charms of youthful grace, thy sunken eye, thy haggard cheeks it shows, the quick emotion struggling in the face, faint index of thy mental throes, when each strong passion spurned control, and not a friend was nigh to calm thy stormy soul. Such was the sad and gloomy hour, when anguished care of sullen brow prepared the poison's death-cold power. Already to thy lips was raised the bowl, when filial pity stood thee by. Thy fixed eyes she bade thee roll on scenes that well might melt thy soul. Thy native cot she held to view, thy native cot, where peace ere long had listened to thy evening song. Thy sister's shrieks she bade thee hear, and mark thy mother's thrilling tear. She made thee feel her deep-drawn sigh, and all her silent agony of woe. And from thy fate shall such distress ensue? Ah, dash the poisoned chalice from thy hand, and thou hadst dashed it at her soft command. But that despair and indignation rose, and told again the story of thy woes, 
told the keen insult of the unfeeling heart, the dread dependence on the low-born mind, told every woe for which thy breast might smart, neglect and grinning scorn and want combined. Recoiling back, thou sentest the friend of pain to roll a tide of death through every freezing vein. O oh, spirit blessed, whether the eternal throne around amidst the blaze of cherubim thou pourest forth the grateful hymn, or, soaring through the blessed domain, enraptured'st angels with thy strain, Grant me, like thee, the lyre to sound, like thee, with fire divine to glow. But ah, when rage the waves of woe, grant me with firmer breast to oppose their hate, and soar beyond the storms with upright eye elate. That was Monody on the Death of Chatterton First Version by Samuel Taylor Coleridge Read by Frank Blissett